did you know rats can multiply so quickly over the course of 18 months that two rats can have over a million descendants? Let me just repeat that. Two rats, 18 months, one million descendants. In comparison, the Kiwi, New Zealand's national icon, might be lucky to have two chicks total in that same period. You may already know that rats eat eggs, but not many people know that they also eat live chicks and adult birds, as well as native insects, lizards, and plants. Now, this may just sound like the circle of life, but it's not like that here in New Zealand. Our wildlife has evolved without mammalian predators, so they don't have the defense mechanisms or the rapid reproductive strategies to cope with the pressures of these predators. As a result, 25 million of our native birds are killed every year, and rats are right up there on the list of who's responsible. Imagine you're a first explorer to New Zealand back in the 13th century. You're arriving in your waka, and after months at sea, you're greeted to the song of the forest kilometers offshore. Once you land, you find there are so many kākāpō, you can just shake a few from a tree. These charismatic green parrots are now restricted to predator-free offshore islands, and very few people get the opportunity to interact with them. Our wildlife is our heritage our international identity and part of what makes New Zealand our home, our Tūranga Waiwai. We don't have pyramids, Stonehenge, or the Great Wall of China, but we do have incredibly special ecosystems filled with species that are found nowhere else in the world. It gives you a true sense of identity when someone hears your accent overseas and yells Kiwi when you're halfway up a mountain in Scotland or in a small supermarket in the middle of Austria. In order to help the recovery of our endangered Taonga species and to protect our identity as Kiwis, New Zealand has announced an ambitious goal to be predator-free by the year 2050. To do this, we aim to remove three main predators from our ecosystems. Rats, stoats, and possums. Our current pest control methods incorporate poisons and trapping, but these are labor-intensive and costly. They have ethical concerns and run the risk of being off target. It has also recently been shown that current pest control measures will not be sufficient to achieve our 2050 goals on a national scale. So we need more tools. Tools that are species-specific, humane, and economically efficient. This brings me to what I'm here to talk to you about today, gene drives. A gene drive is a way to change the DNA of a species so that every individual is carrying a specific gene. These systems have already evolved in nature, and the idea to harness gene drives has been around for decades. But it wasn't until the invention of the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing system that this idea really came to life. Normally, an edited gene has a 50% chance of being inherited. This means that it runs the risk of being lost from the gene pool over time. The difference with a gene drive is that it can increase this rate of inheritance up to 100%. So if we're thinking about using this system for pest control, let's think about what might happen if we use a gene that biases sex ratios or eliminates the fertility of one sex. An example is a gene that is only active in males and plays a specific role in the structure of sperm. If we disabled this gene, then males would be infertile, but females would continue to reproduce and pass the gene to the following generations. So let's look at how CRISPR could help us do this. First of all, we insert our version of the gene 
plus the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing system into the reproductive cells of rats. After this, the system is self-propagating because we've given our gene its own gene editing tool. So when the DNA in these reproductive cells lines up to divide, the gene editing tool is activated. The next step is like doing a find and replace in Microsoft Word. A guide molecule searches and recognizes the gene that we want to replace on the opposite piece of DNA. Our DNA scissors, called Cas9, then cuts out the gene and uses our DNA template to join the gap again. Both pieces of DNA now have our version of the gene and their own gene editing tool. In this way, every offspring is guaranteed to inherit our gene, and the process repeats itself again and again in the following generations. In a species that multiplies as quickly as the rat, all individuals will soon be carrying our gene. And if all the males that are carrying our gene are infertile, the population would collapse and eradication could be achieved. In 2017, 8,000 people from across New Zealand were surveyed on their perceptions relating to new pest control technology. It was found that 50% were undecided or wanted strong controls. So what are the risks that we need to manage with this technology? Let's talk about what could go wrong. The biggest issue for international concern is how we would stop these rats from escaping New Zealand. These gene drive systems are extremely efficient with a very specific purpose, so only a few individuals could affect an off-target population. Rats are native in some parts of the world, so accidentally wiping out a species would have devastating effects on their evolved ecosystems. The good news is, there are people working on safeguards that would either limit gene drives to a particular geographic region or cause them to peter out after a certain amount of time. Another big question, are humans pushing beyond our limits? There is significant discussion that modifying the genetic material of a species should remain a process that only happens in nature. But we have been domesticating animals and cultivating plants by selecting for traits like larger fruit, creamier milk, or plant varieties that grow in extreme environmental conditions. By doing so, we have artificially modified the genetic material of many different life forms. The genetic engineering that is conducted in a lab is the same concept as this artificial selection we have been conducting for thousands of years. The breakthrough is that our approach is increasingly becoming more direct and precise. We don't want to cause harm to the animal, create pink glow-in-the-dark rats, or rats that are double the size. Our rapidly advancing technology means that we can now proofread the genetic material and make sure that we are only making intentional changes to the DNA. In this way, we can double check that we are only targeting fertility and that there are no off-target effects. This research is currently progressing overseas for insect species, like mosquitoes and fruit flies, but the idea is on the table for rodents, and New Zealand has an opportunity to be the world leader in this research. The results will also be valuable for the countless other international ecosystems that have been devastated by rat invasions. So where do gene drives currently stand in New Zealand? New Zealand has a GE-free reputation that has been used to support our international clean green image. But this legislation was established at a time when there were international concerns around food safety. Here we are, decades later. Our understanding and our technology has advanced, and we now want to investigate avenues outside of food production, like genetic pest control. But the laws remain the same. Focusing on the specifics of the technology 
rather than the potential outcomes. Earlier this year, New Zealand placed a ban on research investment in genetic pest control. These systems can currently be compared with the first generation of the iPhone. There are still questions to be answered and upgrades to be made. So placing a ban on research funding is like applying the handbrake at the beginning of a race. A race in which our endangered flora and fauna will lose out to introduced invaders, like rats. Gene drives are one tool of many to achieve our dream. The year 2050 is now only 30 years away, and no one has yet made a gene drive pest control system outside of yeast and insects. And as Kiwis, we don't have the time to handcuff anyone investigating potential avenues for pest control systems. Right now, just in the time I've been speaking to you, over 500 New Zealand birds have been killed by introduced predators. So my challenge to you is to talk about genetic pest control and ask the question whether this is something you would explore given the economic, the ethical, and the off-target effects of current pest control. Talk to your friends, your neighbours, your family, and your flatmates about what you've heard today. Discuss how it would affect you to wake up to birdsong, to not have the threat of rats in your roof, or the obligation to contribute to the hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars going towards never-ending predator control. Change is scary, but the thought of what we stand to lose if we don't challenge ourselves is even more terrifying. Fast forward to the year 2050. You are walking with your kids and you see a Kiwi sprint up the path in a reserve just a short walk from your house. They are no longer the mythical birds that your friends once joked about. You wake up the next morning to the dawn chorus and hear the flutter of wings as a kaka swoops into your garden. And you ask yourself how this was possible, how you helped to challenge standing views and left no stone unturned in the pursuit of a predator-free New Zealand. Thank you.